Hello fellow leg givers, I'm here to show you how to dismember your character in C++, not blueprints. And I'm going to start from the Blender user interface because I want to show you how to dissect or bisect your character, cut him apart so that then you can import it into Unreal Engine and then activate, then activate code functions that allow you to allow you to dismember that character I'm just only going to show you one body part because I believe if you if I only show you that one body part you'll be able to do the rest on your own you won't have to uh, go through all every single body part because practically everything is the same once you get this one body part done okay now I uh, as you can see I imported I imported the UE4 mannequin. I selected the mesh and I selected I switched to edit mode and I selected all of the vertices vert vertices. And then what you're going to do, you're going to go to where it says bisect. Go over here. You have to make sure that you select all and what you do go over here you click drag it so then you see that orange line crossing the vertices and you do clear outer or clear inner then once you're done with that you want to press fill so it fills in the mesh the only do once you're done with that, you you go into object mode. You can it doesn't really matter. You can select select armature and, and the mesh itself. Export. Then what, then what you're doing? I already have something here. I have the SK mannequin. I have a right arm. This is the left arm. Then what you want to do? You want to click selected objects. And, and click armature and mesh and do not apply unit do not apply use space transform do not bake an animation because you're not using an animation and do only deform bones I'm going to switch this to the left arm left arm and then what I'm going to do I'm going to export it to that folder alright so I exported it And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag and drop this, this left arm in. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, select the skeletal mesh and to import the mesh. I'm going to import the mesh and attach it to the SK mannequin skeleton that you import when you export that one mannequin in order to to allow it to uh, in order for you to be able to edit that mesh and then uh, you then you import that that mesh from a different template from the third person template and you import it into a first person template project which is what I'm using right now I probably should have declared that at the beginning of the video, but now you know. Use a first-person template um, a project, and then you export this mannequin skeleton from the third-person template project. All right, so I'm going to import this. I'm going to import the rotation around negative 90 degrees. I want to see if this works. It worked. The reason why negative 90 is because you need to fiddle with it to make sure that once you once you import it, basically you're gonna be you're gonna be uh, looking at it. And it might not rotate correctly, so keep fiddling with the rotation, making negative 90 on the X or uh, negative 90 on the Y or positive 90 on the X, positive 90 on the Y. And here you go. Here's uh, here's the arm. And as you notice, since I attached it to the uh, skeleton, 
it has all the bones that that skeleton has. So right now, I'm going to enter the blueprint for the C++ class that I had created, which is a character class named uh, Dismember, Dismembered Mannequin. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put the left arm there. This has no animation BP because I don't believe it's necessary to have one. And I set it to no collision. The reason why I set it to no collision because in C++ you're gonna you're going to modify that collision once you hit the arm with a line trace that I'm about to show you. So this is the left arm, that's the right arm. Oh this is the mesh. Ooh, ooh. Here's the left arm, here's the right arm. No collision, simulate generate hit events just in case. The reason why just in case, because if you know, for example, you hit one of these bones, you want that to react anyway. So now uh, I have the left arm. Here you go, dismember mannequin, and I'll show you, show you what to do here. And go over here. Oh, sorry. You want to create a C++ class called dismembered mannequin. Oh, but first, let me get out of here real quick. You want to drag that dismembered mannequin into the world so that then you can affect it using whatever means. And so you want to create a C++ class called dismembered mannequin, then create a blueprint class which is here called dismembered mannequin and then what you're going to do you're going to set its collision set the mesh's collision to block a new line trace channel you know and also simulate generate hit events because you're using a line trace to call this function inside the, inside this character. So right now it's gonna say query only, no physical collision, pawn, uh, bullet trace. I created this trace channel. I'm gonna show you how to create a trace channel. You go over here, go to project settings. Type in the search details panel. Go where it says bullet trace or go where it says new trace channel, you create a new trace channel and then you can create your own trace channel and set the default response to block. This tra this new trace channel is so that it's specifically for my line trace that I had set up in C++ or set up here in the editor to use in C++. So right now I uh, created the dismembered mannequin I'm just calling it Dismembered Mannequin. Create a blueprint class called, uh, you know, Dismembered Mannequin. You go in here, and th these are all attached to this one mesh. The head, everything. The reason why I'm leaving these out is just to give a better example of what may you want to do. If you want to create, if you want to attach a right leg, if you want to attach a left leg right arm left arm but for now I'm just going to do the right arm and the left arm the mesh is set to visible the left arm is set to hidden game this also if you ever do that you want to set it to hidden game and control it in C++ whether you want to you know hide it or not but I would recommend hiding it And now has no collision because you're trying to activate it by hitting this particular bone along the normal mesh's body. So that then uh, you can call a function within this, or call a function that affects this particular attached arm. So what I'm gonna do? Gonna show you the code. First, I'm gonna start with the line trace itself. I'm using FP gun 
which is just a normal gun that's attached to the to the default character. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna delete all the code inside your original C++ actor character. And you're gonna put this here. It's a multi-line trace by channel just for posterity. Just to, pra just to practice and use a uh, multi-line trace instead of a single line trace, you can use whichever you want, a single line trace. And you're calling a function that passes in this, this parameter, which is a string. And uh, th that this converts the bone name to a string. The results hit the bone and converts that bone into a string. And that and the result is what bone you hit because each each one of those bones ha has its own designated string that you're create you're use you're create you're uh, passing by reference to this and then putting into this function. I'm casting to it. Just th this conversion is unnecessary. You don't need it. You don't need it, but if you that's for a different purpose. If you want to, you know, uh, do anything particular like, um, you know, pushing uh, the bone along a vector using pushing the bone along uh, using impulse, you may want to do this. Com use a converted string. And right now. I'm going to show you the the code, more of the code. See, I'm just creating a bone name. Just calling it bone name, f string bone name. And that's about it. Nothing really else, just this. And everything is local variables. You know, I'm attaching the start trace to the socket of the muzzle of the FP gun, the current rotation socket to, to you know to the muzzle socket rotation to the muzzle this F rotator I'm attaching it to the to the socket rotation I'm using the end trace plus start trace plus current rotation vector converting this to a vector so that then you can use the uh, the rotation of the muzzle itself and you're multiplying it by 7000 which is the distance getting a debug getting a line trace multi by channel enemy hit and end trace visibility channel which is game trace channel one which is the one that I had just created it can be game trace channel two, two three four etc checking to see if I actually hit anything at all whatsoever looping through the results with enemy hit checking to see if enemy hits are within results memory address and then casting to see if uh, see if I actually hit the character, and then calling this function within the character. Let me sh let me show you what's inside the character. Right now, I uh, declare multiple skeletal mesh component properties with edit anywhere, and then uh, I set the master pose component, which is uh, very important if you don't do this this will not work this is where I am affecting the the bone itself the, the mesh itself so it can be so the physics can simulate show you inside here okay so here creating uh, default sub objects of you skeletal mesh component setting up the attachment to the mesh all the same then down here, uh, setting the master pose component to the mesh itself. That's how you set the master pose component at each and every single one of them. And here I'm, uh, I'm calling this function from within, from when the CPP character here, calling this function with this cast, and passing this bone name using results, def hit results, bone name. And now uh, I'm checking to see if the upper arm or the lower arm contains this string.
the, this bone contains this string. This bone, uh, this converged string, or this bone, this parameter contains this string. And if it does, it'll activate a function. This is the upper arm, left arm, the upper arm, lower arm, left. And now what you always want to do, you want to get the mesh and hide the bone by the name. The converted bone by the name. So that then uh, the converged string. That's why you're converting the string. So that then you can hide the bone. Uh, hide the mesh itself. Not, not, the, not the attached skeletal mesh. The mesh itself. Not the attachment. You're hiding the mesh itself. So that then you're setting this master pose component for the left arm to null so that then it can be prepared to be detached and then you're saying the collision enabled to query in physics so that then you're preparing it for it to fall itself because without this being then it, the without the collision being enabled to query in physics this will this function will never happen and the, and this will also fail so i'm saying to simulate physics to true left arm set hidden game to false because you're actually hiding it. That's why I decided to hide it inside the editor so that then so that then you can set it to false within within C++. And here's the code. This applies also to the lower arm right, right and lower and upper arm right. And let me show you again. Just to clarify where they get those strings from. Right here. Upper arm left, lower arm right, hand left. And here is the, the lower arm right, the upper arm right, lower arm right. So if I hit either of these two, the the the, the mesh will hide itself in that particular area and drop the drop the arm. Alright, let me give you a demonstration. As you can see, the arm fell from the upper upper right hand side of the arm itself, the upper upper arm near the shoulder. Now let me try it. Let me do something different. See? It fell. And that hit hidden. So now look. Not completely accurate because the muzzle the line trace is somewhat, uh, the muzzle is a little bit off, but you get the complete idea. I hope that uh, you have a wonderful day, you fellow lead givers. Give them lead. All right, uh, have a good one. Have a wonderful and perfect day. Stay safe out there. Bye.